Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. We're out here south of Manhattan, Kansas, and we're gonna to talk today about taking blood samples. And, and I think it's gonna be a great show. We've got a, a guest here today, and so stay tuned. to you by Egg Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at eggpromosource.com. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine. Your stem cells, your health, your life. We have a few different angles here going on on the camera, so it's a nice day out here at Farley Ranch. And folks, I want to introduce you to John Farley who's someone who's a friend and, and someone that has allowed us to come out to his facility this morning. Hi, welcome Doc. to the show. Thank you, welcome. <laughs> and, uh, you know, John, as we were talking, you have, uh, you know, you've seen advances in science and, and the things that you're doing with stem cell and, and, and not only do, you know, do we see those types of things, but now we're seeing things come into where maybe you take a blood sample of a cow, send it in for diagnostics or take a blood sample and pregnancy tests. And Lots of amazing things going on aren't there? Yeah. That, that That's something. But the thing that, that always gets me is, you know, regardless of what we're sending something in in the test tube for the gee whiz uh, shebang, yeah. we still got to be able to catch a cow. <laughs> 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 and we got to be able to take a blood sample. Yes, you do. And uh, <laughs> send it in. And uh, that's, uh, <laughs> you know, be able to handle a cow. And, and your facilities here, you know, we've done shows on bud boxes and, and working facilities. <laughs> this, is, this is like someone that took every note and did it exactly yeah. the right way. This is perfect. That's and, a school of hard knocks there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, folks, some of the reasons why we take these blood samples is is now we're seeing where you can do diagnostics where BBDPI testing or or uh, different types of panels for infectious diseases with your diagnostic lab and your veterinarian the other one is 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 taking them for uh, pregnancy tests and so they're basically when when you start to think about taking a blood sample there's two ways to to do it you can use a vacutainer tube which when you go into your doctor and they pinch off your arm and and uh, use the 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 vacutainer and 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 screw it in as such and you all have seen this when you go to your doctor for your physical exam and then the 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 blood tube just slips on on the end of it or the other one is is to use a syringe with a needle and take that sample thank you mama <laughs> take that sample um, and uh, and then put the needle on the the blood tube some of the things that you need to also be aware of, not only the equipment in which you're going to use to take the blood sample, but there might be different requirements for blood tubes. And I have three different types here. I've got the purple top, the green top, and the red top. And when you go in for your physical, yeah, see, I saw you coming. Hmm. You go in for your physical exam, depending on what they want to run, if they want to run whole blood so that they can get uh, serum the, the white blood cell counts and red blood cell counts and, and things of that nature, they're going to use one tube. And then if they just need serum, they're going to use a red top tube. Okay. And so if we're going to use um, whole blood, we'll use the EDTA and, and you might use a, a, the green top, purple top. And then if we're going to use serum, we'll use a, a, a red top. And so depending on what test it is, it's really important that you don't just grab the first blood tube that you see, work with your veterinarian, work with the, the group that's providing the test, and make sure that you get a, a tube that is appropriate so that you have the right kind of sample for the right kind of test when you, you send it in. We're gonna take a break. When we come back, John and I are gonna to demonstrate to y'all how we take a, a jugular blood sample, and then we'll take one out of the tail, and uh, we'll get y'all down the road. Thanks for joining us today.
Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agamincansas.com. Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. Healthy cows start with the new Hired Hand Automatic Livestock Sprayer. Rancher invented to provide an efficient alternative to pour-on and injectable parasite management systems. The portable design allows cattle to treat themselves head to hoof. Strategic device placement with pass-through activation technology takes the stress out of parasite treatment for cattle and the rancher, leaving more time to tend to other vital tasks on the farm. To learn more, visit cowsprayer.com. The new hired hand makes healthy cows easy. This segment brought to you by Santa Fe Trail Meats in Overbrook. Visit us online at sftmeats.com. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm here with John Farley and our special guest number <laughs> Whatever. And what we're going to talk about taking the jugular blood sample. And the first thing you got to do is we got to restrain the cow. A lot of times if you have a halter, you'll want to have a, a halter around the, the, the cow. Sometimes you just got a rope, so you've got to make a halter out of the rope. And what you do is you put a loop around the neck, and then I bring a half hitch back through the rope to where... to where... And then make a halter, okay? And we're gonna bring that around here to where that that cow, where that rope is pulling back. She's a little bit stout. She's stronger than us. Can we get another loop? But we're getting another wrap, and we'll uh, help her not be as strong. So I'm gonna take this first one here with the vacutainer tube. And the way that we do this is, the first thing is, is when you restrain the cow, you wanna have the neck bent and you wanna get her to where you're gonna find that jugular furrow. So when you look here at the cow, you can see this big bulging muscle here on the neck and then down here is the trachea. There is a natural furrow that runs right along here in that jugular vein runs at that angle and it's it's really really prominent this is a big uh vein now there are different ways to if you're if if you're not using a rope you're going to want to do an approach in this manner where you can use your hip and where you can pin that head off so that i can get a, a sample at this angle okay but a lot of times, man, I really like to have the restraint. You just don't know when you're gonna uh, have a cow throw you, a cow that could uh, uh, twist your knee, and if you can't work, you can't make money. And, <laughs> and so um, you wanna protect yourself. We got her tied with the, with, the, with the halter, off to the side, head restraint. So I feel comfortable coming in at an angle such as this. So when you're taking a blood sample, the first thing you got to remember is that it's venous return. So it's a jugular vein. So it's going back from the, the head back down towards the um, lungs and the heart. And so you can see, as I put pressure down here, you can see that the vein starts to pop at this point in time. And I can see take my needle off, needle uh, coverage off, and I'm gonna put that needle right there. And then you just let it blood fill into the capsule, just like such. Take your tube off, and then you wanna invert it once you have the blood in the, the capsule and then we can move forward. We're gonna take a break, and when we come back, we're gonna do tail bleeding on the cow, and uh, appreciate having a good uh, cooperating guest here with us today. <laughs> Thanks for watching Doc Talk, we'll be right back.
Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas. We work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you. Did you know long-range planning through the checkoff can help keep your business profitable? To successfully pass on cattle operations from one generation to the next, it's important to promote beef and keep farms and ranches profitable. Your beef checkoff helps do that. We are Mike and Martha Armitage here at the A-Bar Ranch, Claremore, Oklahoma. We have a cow-calf uh, production company and we also have a marketing company. We have entertained groups brought to us by the beef checkoff, uh, such as uh, South Korean media that uh, covered our operation and brought the good news back to South Korea. That was a, a really neat experience and that we got to have young people from another country that we got to experience a lot of different things in their culture, but got to share our culture too. We live on the Squaw Creek Ranch here as a division of the A-Bar Ranch. As a, as a wife and a mother, and also with my background in more of a health field, I look at just the nutritional value and it's, it's great that the Beef Checkoff offers that kind of information to the consumers that are out there. We both are proud to come from agricultural, more specifically ranching backgrounds. My dad is a part of the Beef Checkoff board and so the Beef Checkoff has been something that we promote and that we support what it has to offer. Not everybody who's in agriculture is tech savvy on Facebook and through social media. Most people in the city happen to be, and they are very <laughs> disconnected from our day-to-day -day routines, and that's one thing that makes me proud of the Beef Checkoff, them going to bat for us mm -hmm. uh, from those who aren't necessarily anti-ag, but just simply don't know and they aren't getting the information. As producers, uh, we're strong supporters of that and hope that Many of you out there realize all of the different things that the Beef Checkoff brings to the table for us as producers. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. I'm Rex Anstrew, veterinarian in Western Iowa. I have a veterinary clinic and uh, started doing stem cell therapy on dogs in August of 2014 and after the first two dogs after three weeks I saw such dramatic results I said hey I have arthritis I have joints really need this help where can I go to get this done I had stem cell therapy done in November of 2014 on my finger joints my hip and the ball of my left foot, uh, all of which I'd had real severe problems with, saw a pretty dramatic uh, improvement in a short amount of time. I would certainly recommend that somebody don't wait until I'm in the position that I was in with the d damage already done to my joints. But I encourage veterinarians to use it for their animals, and I encourage anybody who sees this video, if you have need, get in contact with these people because this is a phenomenal place to have this done. This segment brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. Progress powered by Kansas farmers. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan here. We've talked about blood sampling. We're out here at the Farley Ranch, south of Manhattan. Beautiful day. And we talked about taking the blood sample first from the jugular vein. The other place that's probably more convenient for a lot of producers is going to be to look at the, the tail and taking a blood sample out of the tail. And when we do the blood sample out of the tail, we'll just lift the tail to the point and, and you want to come right at the middle of the tail, about six inches 
uh, away from the base. And a lot of times if they're covered with, you know what, I'll wipe them with the towel, come here to the point where I have the, the tail and, and uh, that, just like a pump handle, will come right up here to the middle where that, that vein runs. We'll insert the, the needle and we'll just draw blood just like out of a pump handle and you lower that tail and the blood comes out. So pretty easy place to, to get a, a blood sample from a cow. Um, be careful that you have proper restraint. Be careful that we uh, have the ability that you don't get kicked and things will go smoothly. Um, some of the tricks to tail bleeding cows is sometimes you think that, that that blood vessel runs too shallow or too deep. You'll have to get a feel for where that kind of runs and lays in the tail. But it's right down the middle of the tail, about six inches from the base. I used a 16 gauge, three quarter inch needle on that one with a syringe. You don't want to pull too hard because you can collapse the vein. You don't want to pull uh, too soft or you won't draw. The 16 gauge needle works a little bit better, a little bit bigger. Um, you can use an 18 gauge, but for tail bleeding, a lot of times I'll use a uh, half inch to uh, three quarter inch needle and be able to draw that. You want to take that immediately, depending on what type of sample you're going to have. If Heather can hand me one of those, uh, two, hand me that red top tube. We have the red top tube here, and you'll just take uh, the the sample, put it through the through the uh, blood tube, and it'll draw on its own. And once it does, uh, these we won't invert. We'll just take because we want them to clot. But uh, immediately transfer that to the blood tube, and then you can send your samples in depending on how they want it done. You may want to work with your veterinary clinic. And, and if that is the case so that you can centrifuge the blood samples to get only send the serum in. Um, if you're wanting to, to send in blood or plasma, then you'll have to use the different top tubes with the EDTA or some sort of anticoagulant so that you make sure that it uh, happens for you as well. But tail bleeding, jugular bleeding, those are basically the two ways that we can get blood out of a cow. We're gonna take a break. When we come back, we'll wrap up here at the Farley Ranch. Hi, I'm Kim Mandarin with Hardy Insurance. I'm here to help you with all of your farm and ranch needs. When it comes to protecting your operation and your family, you need a name you can trust at a price you can afford. Call me today or visit hardyaviationins.com. As fourth generation farmers themselves, Heinen Brothers Ag Service understands the risk and rewards of farming. So when it comes to quality aerial and ground application, fertilizer, ag chemicals, and anhydrous ammonia, call Heinen Brothers Ag today, 800-760-4964. We do business with Blueville because of the quality of their work it is excellent quality and because they make a commitment to their customers. We enjoy the benefits of hiring a good company to help us maintain this home. We will always do business with Blueville. We have for many, many years, and there's no reason for us to look for any other service. Hey folks, thanks for joining me on today's Cattle First Minute as sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica. You know, when we start to think about breeding season and turning bulls out, the one thing I can't emphasize enough is to get a breeding soundness exam done on your bulls before turnout. And some of the things that can happen during the winter, whether it's frostbite in certain areas of the body or there's things that can happen that, that will cause a bull to become uh, infertile are things that you need to make sure. The other thing that's very important on a breeding soundness exam is we have to make sure that we don't have lameness or, or issues with the feet because no wheels, no calves. So making sure that we have a sound bull structurally, making sure that we have one that's fertile and, and one that, that can produce enough sperm and enough volume with enough motility with no defects in the sperm is vitally important to making sure every year before you turn out to ensure that you get a calf crop at least from the bull's point of view. No matter where, no matter why, 
the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook or Twitter. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. We have successfully taken our blood samples from, from our cow and I just thought it'd be good and, and it's always neighborly to to introduce you to, to a person that has done a lot in the beef industry, done a lot uh, here in the Riley County area, Geary County area, um, and all over our state. Um, uh, Mr. John Farley, whose ranch we're on today, <coughs> Farley Ranch, and, and John, just kind of give us a little introduction to yourself and, and what you've done in your career. and, and now remember this he's done a lot and this is not a, a long show well, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> i've just been in the cattle business all my life been with innovative livestock services for for several years and uh, moved to manhattan when we moved our, our risk management procurement office here and uh, have this little place here this ranch and uh, we've evolved into the <laughs> into the, <laughs> the, the the stem cell business with enzo discoveries and kansas regenerative medicine yeah y'all y'all have um, many different, I mean, working with ILS, you, you were head of procurement and, and buying mm -hmm. cattle for yeah. many feed yards and, and a lot of our viewers probably uh, sold you some probably cattle did. and, I'm and sure. some, some y'all do things right. And, and I'm really excited too, you know, when we're sitting here talking about the blood samples and taking blood samples, some of the things that y'all have coming with Enzo Discoveries and, and looking at stem cell and and ways that veterinarians and farmers and ranchers can take samples, send them in, and, and get things enriched so that you can treat joints and, and horses and dogs and cats all around the world. Yeah, we're real excited about that. We've just started processing animal stem cells right on location. You can ship them in overnight. We'll have them back to you the next day, or you can bring them to our lab and we'll process them on the spot. And it's the lab's located here in Manhattan. It is, correct? yes. Yeah. Uh huh. And. Uh, you know, folks, when you start to see the technology and you start to understand where we're headed, uh, not only with human medicine, but with, with companion animal medicine, with food animal medicine, the diagnostics, the treatments, um, you know, and, and everybody can get involved. Did you dream you were going to be oh doing, my gosh. doing stem cells? Who would ever thought about it? You know, <laughs> I, I just did it out of success for myself. You know, right. I had it done five years ago and had such great results. We're so passionate about it, we just decided to bring it to, to Manhattan. Absolutely, yeah. and the, the, the samples, then um, where do you see that type of business going? Where do you see you know, that being used in, in our, and specifically equine, right? Yes, yeah, equine and small animals. Yeah, we, we've, we get a lot of shipments in overnight from Arizona and big equine farms around. Uh, they get in at 10 the next morning, we process that day and back out that night and, and then inject veterinary them the next day, in the, the next morning, yes, in, yeah. the, in the joint and IV, yes. Yeah. Well, I've had a lot of uh, daughters with ACL injuries and different things of that and, and being able to see the future of, of stem cells, of, of some of the, the cartilage transplants and things coming down the road, mm -hmm. but folks, understanding that it's coming for food animals and, and things to that nature. Probably not cost effective yet, but there will probably be some things that come in the future. Yes, you say? I'm sure. I'm sure there will. There's a lot of progress coming in that. Well, I appreciate yeah. you allowing us to come out here. Happy and, to have you here. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Well, it's always a pleasure, folks. Uh, John Farley here at the Farley Ranch. Thanks for watching Doc Talk today. Um, if you want to know more about what we do at Doc Talk, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. Remember to always work with your local veterinarian, whether it's taking samples or sending them in to his clinic or her clinic, it's, uh, it's something that you need to do. Again, I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here at Kansas State University. Thanks for watching Doc Talk today, and I'll see you down the road.
Closed captioning brought to you by Egg Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at eggpromosource.com.